Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the cube root of 1 plus x plus the cube root of 1 minus x equals 2. And we're going to be finding the x values. I'll be presenting three methods. Let's get started. Now, our first method involves cubing both sides. So if you cube both sides, you're going to get 8. Now, in order to be able to cube this, I'm going to use the following formula. I'm going to cube the first one. So a, as you know, this can be written as a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. But we can also write it differently. a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times the quantity a plus b. This is the formula I'm going to use. So that gives me the cube root of 1 over 1 plus x squared, or cubed, actually, the other way around. So I'm going to cube the first term, which is 1 plus x. I'm going to cube the second term, which is 1 minus x. And then plus 3 times the first term, without cubing, times the second term, multiply by the sum of the terms. So that's going to be the cube root of 1 plus x plus the cube root of 1 minus x. And the whole thing is going to equal 8. Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this. x cancels out. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Now notice that we have uh, cube root of 1 plus x plus cube root of 1 minus x equals 2. So this is equal to 2. And when you multiply by 3, that's going to be a 6. So 1 plus 1 equals 2 plus 6 times the cube root of. When you multiply these two things, you're going to get the cube root of 1 minus x squared from difference of two squares. And that is equal to 8. Subtract 2 from both sides. You get 6 times the cube root of 1 minus x squared is equal to 6. And if you divide both sides by 6, you get the cube root of 1 minus x squared equals 1. If you cube both sides, you get 1 minus x squared equals 1 and x squared equals 0. And this gives us x equals 0 as the only solution. All right, let's go ahead and proceed with the second method. Now the second method, even though it's kind of similar to the first one, it's a little different. So I'm, let me rewrite my equation. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I, I, I want to use substitution. So let's go ahead and name this A and name this B. So we have A equals cube root of 1 plus X. Let me rewrite it. A equals cube root of 1 plus X and b equals cube root of 1 minus x. Great. So from here, we get a plus b equals 2, right? So, cool. But not only that, if you cube both of these numbers, a cubed becomes 1 plus x, and b cubed becomes 1 minus x. And when you add those two equations, you get a cubed plus b cubed equals 2, because the x cancels out. Awesome. So now we have a system, this one and this one. Let's go ahead and solve that as system. a cubed plus b cubed is a um, sum of two cubes. So it is factorable. Let's go ahead and factor it. It can be written as a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Great. Now, I do know that a plus b is equal to 2. So I can go ahead and substitute that. So both of these are 2. So this is equal to 2. This is equal to 2 which implies that this must equal 1. Great, so now I have a squared minus ab plus b squared is equal to 1. And I also know that a plus b is equal to 2. So this makes another system that we can solve. It's easier because it's quadratic. So there are kind of two ways to go about it. So you could probably call this um, two, second method 2a and 2b, 2b or not 2b. Uh, one of the methods is basically you can just go ahead and substitute. So from here, you can isolate b. b can be written as 2 minus a. If I plug it into the second equation, I get a squared minus a times b, which is 2 minus a, plus b squared, which is 2 minus a quantity squared, and the whole thing is equal to 1. Since it's uh, in a single variable, we can solve it. This gives us a squared minus 2a plus a squared plus 4 
minus 4a plus a squared equals 1. And if you add them all up, you get 3a squared minus 6a plus 3 is equal to 0, or 3 times a minus 1 quantity squared. Because let me explain that step a little bit. So from here we get 3 times a squared minus 2a plus 1 equals 0. And as you know, the expression inside the parentheses can be written as a minus 1 quantity squared. So from here, we get that a is equal to 1. But again, we're not looking for a, we're looking for x. So how do you find x from here? Well, if a is equal to 1, that implies that b is also equal to 1 because a plus b is equal to 2. And then now let's go back and back substitute. a is equal to cube root of 1 plus x. So a is equal to cube root of 1 plus x. And that is equal to 1. From here, if you cube both sides, you get 1 plus x equals 1. And x equals 0 as before. Obviously, we should be getting the same answer. Even though we use different methods, we should always arrive at the same answer. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the third method. And at the end of this, at the end of this, I'm going to show you a graph. All right, so hang in there. Let's go ahead and take a look at our second, I mean, third method. Now, the third method, and let me rewrite my equation so you can see what that looks like again. The cube root of 1 plus x plus the cube root of 1 minus x is equal to 2. My third method is guess and check, which is a problem-solving strategy, right? Well, I'm just guessing x equals 0 is going to work, and it actually does because cube root of 1 plus cube root of 1 is equal to 2. Now, the problem with this method is how can you verify that x equals 0 is the only solution, right? Obviously, you kind of have to do more, more uh, on this to verify um, that this is the only solution, but we're not going to get into that. I don't want to keep it too long because I'm also going to talk about the graph and how this function behaves, so on and so forth. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now and, you know, say a few words about how this function behaves. All right, so... Here's the graph of our function, obviously, or should I say, unfortunately, uh, Desmos doesn't allow us to write cube roots. You have to write it as something to the power one third. It's the same thing. Now, you see kind of like an interesting uh, shaped graph here uh, because of the cube roots, but notice that this is symmetrical. What is that supposed to mean? It means that if you replace x with negative x, the function um, is unchanged which means that this is actually an even function. Why? Because if uh, you replace x with negative x, you pretty much get the same thing, 1 minus x to the power 1 third plus 1 plus x to the power 1 third from commutative property, you basically get the same thing. Great. But not only that, I mean, that's a good thing because if you find a solution, obviously its opposite is also going to be a solution, but since 0 is the only solution, we don't really have any uh, positive or negative answers. Anyways. Uh, but if you look at this graph carefully, you, you're going to notice that at 0, 2, we actually have a horizontal tangent. So how do you verify that? You can go ahead and differentiate and go with the calculus method, but I'm not going to get into that. So to keep a long story short, uh, the solution is x equals 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.